Hello, everybody, and welcome to Milton Keynes Literary Festival for this last event that we're having in the wonderful Milton Keynes Central Library. And a huge thank you to the library um, staff and team who've been making us so welcome today. Um, my name is Flora Rees, and um, I'm welcoming you here on behalf of the organising committee. And just a few housekeeping notices before we get started. First of all, um, Emergency exits are at the back of the hall if we need them, and I hope we won't. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Milton, C Milton Keynes City Council, to the libraries, to our festival booksellers, Waterstones, to the community learning Milton Keynes, who've been hugely supportive as well, and to our parent organization, Arts Gateway, to all of whom we are hugely grateful for helping make the Lit Fest what it can be. Um, and also to our amazing volunteers who've been here all day working incredibly hard. Um, we're, we're doing some filming and photography during the ceremony, so if anybody has any problems, please do let me know afterwards and we'll make sure that you're not featured because we will be putting this on social media. And um, as I think I, you all know, we are going to be asking our winners of the competition to uh, read their piece out um, on stage after being presented with their prize and we're very much looking forward to hearing that happen. So we have really enjoyed um, running this competition and hugely appreciative of everybody who has entered it and congratulations to everyone who was shortlisted. It's, uh, uh, you all know the competition was Green Spaces in the City. We invited you to reflect on that theme and we had a huge number of different responses to it and really, really interesting, engaging pieces that we very much enjoyed reading. Um, we have, I'm delighted to say, um, the book is here and it is published and the only reason no one's had it yet is because of course it does reveal who the winners are. So we've been keeping it safe and secret and we are utterly delighted with the way it's come out. So just a quick run through. Um, I'm about to invite one of our judges on stage to help present the prizes which I'm very pleased about. We have a fairly tight timeline because as you may know the library closes at five so we're going to be inviting you up we're going to be asking all the winners and the shortlisties at the end to come outside for a photograph outside uh, the library where we have our lovely Milton Keynes Lit Fest banners and we are hugely looking forward to that we also have um, the books available I hope some of you have bought them already we'll be giving those to you at the end if you've purchased them and everybody who's entered gets their own copy which will be handed out by our volunteers at the back of the room or just outside the room at the end of the event so i'm sure i hope you look forward to seeing your own name in print and enjoying the book so i'd now like to invite one of our judges up on stage imogen robertson who is a wonderful author writer and came and judged our flash fiction competition imogen's latest book is the russian doll which is available Waterstones, and she um, was was delight, absolutely delighted that she could join us for judging the competition alongside um, Jupiter Jones, um, and we also had Patrick Wright and Steve Kendall judging the poetry competition, and to all of whom we are hugely grateful because they did a wonderful job of assessing and talking about your work and working out which ones they felt would be the shortlistees, and then a very, very difficult decision on which ones were going to go further forward. So Imogen, welcome. Thank you. And it was a very difficult decision. There was some fantastic work there. And thank you so much. It, I, I so enjoy um, judging these competitions, particularly because it was through these these sorts of competitions that I got my my start and started getting my, my confidence as a writer going forward. So congratulations to, to everybody who entered. And of course, particularly to the, the shortlisted and, and winning entries. It's quite an achievement. So uh, with no further ado, we'll get to the difficult bit. So we're going to, um, first of all, read out the we apologies. We were very pleased to be able to find that we had such strong competition that we have awarded two highly commended and one winner of each competition. And we would like to invite our highly commended uh, writers just to stand up and receive our congratulations. And then we'll be inviting the winners on stage. Um, and we're going to start with uh, our fiction, flash fiction category, 20 plus. So our highly commended writers, please stand up for your congratulations, are Sam T. Butterworth, I'm afraid couldn't be with us today. And Ray Leverahman, with a wonderful piece called Roots. And the winner is Susan Reed with Green Therapist. Susan, please come up. Out version for you to read out, it'd be really so kind. Oh, 
I genuinely was not expecting that. <laughs> 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 if you don't. Susan, if you're, if you're willing to, please. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you all for that. Well, a huge thank you to obviously to the judges and to the prize. Um, I was so inspired by the theme, and it was great to have that theme. Um, and I wrote this more or less kind of straight away, so I'm kind of amazed and a bit flustered. So bear with me. I'm also not an actor, so this is quite hard. Let's play a word association game. Best I am. She's an aspiring therapist, and I'm a people pleaser. So she knows I'll agree, especially after two glasses of Malbec. Just say the first thing that pops into your head, okay? I'm far from okay with what might pop out of my head, but I lie back on her couch, eyes closed, as if this is a real therapy session. Head, she says. Shrink, I say, smiling at my little joke. Green. My mind hints a blank wall and my eyes fly open. Diane is squinting through her very focals at the next word on her list. Never mind, she says, let's keep going. Water. Will and Lake, for the first time in ages, I remember Milton Keynes and all those bloody parks. To sing, says Diane. I force myself to think of anything other than MK. Beyonce. Dead. Space. Long. Time. Ship. Wreck. To pay. Mother. Window. Pain. Then I can't breathe. And I don't hear any more words. Space roars around me. And I grip the arm of the sofa. Diane's sofa. I'm in Diane's living room and I'm safe here. Safe, I say to myself, until I start to believe it. Let's stop, I say out loud. What happened, Diane asks. And when I don't reply, where is Willen Lake? In Milton Keynes. The place up the M1 with all the roundabouts. It's very green, I say, on aut autopilot, reaching for my glass. A great place to bring up kids. Diane glances out of the window at her neighbour's fire escape. Yeah, I suppose it would be compared to Brixton. Why did you move away? Empty nest. No, not exactly. I got used to the empty house. Used Callum's bedroom as an office and Ava's for drying clothes. I pause, gulp, more Malbec. It was the outdoors that got to me. The kids loved our garden and all the parks. They were always outside. All those bloody green spaces just outside the window. When I knew the kids weren't coming back, I closed the curtains, stopped going out, lived on deliveries. But the green spaces were still there. In the end, I came here. Diane hands me a box of tissues and I realise my face is wet. I've never met your children, have I? What are they like? Callum's a lumberjack in Canada, and Ava's married to an Argentinian rancher. I have five grandchildren now. Congratulations. Why would she say that? I've never met them. My kids never visit because... I look into eyes that are empty of judgment and say it out loud for the first time. The green spaces took them. Diane leans across the coffee table, takes both my hands and says, I think you should see a real therapist. I nod as she knows I will. Then I change my mind and lie back on her couch, waiting for the next word. No, you're great. You have me at green. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. That was fabulous. Um, our next category is the Flash Fiction 14 to 19 category. Our highly commended, please do stand up, are Amelia Tadic with um, Immutable and Neve Whelan with 
think walking and thinking in circles. I think Amelia is here. And our winner is Toby Shrimpton with Growth from the Machine. Growth from the machine. It's like any other day. James walks over the small wooden bridge that stretches over a small stream. He goes over the bridge with a slight sound of water in the stream trickling down a small waterfall. He heads to his favourite place in the forest, the upturned tree. He walks down the small dirt path with trees standing on each side and like steel bastions. He gets to a small entrance surrounded by thick bushes that houses the upturned tree. But he doesn't see a tree when he gets to the entrance. He sees a tank. A large ray of sun hits the tank with a thick canopy. The tank sits there, dead and rusty. Vines, mo the vines and moss seem to grow around it, and a couple of bushes dot its tracks. James runs over to it in astonishment, not taking any time to think how it placed the upturned tree. With his dad being a historian, James knows quite a bit about tanks and other, and after a moment, knows what type of tank it is. A mighty Yagpunk. James walks around the walks around the overgrown tank, taking in every scratch and rusty piece of paint. The tank's main gun sags down towards the ground, and the interleaved road wheels are jammed onto each other. James goes around to the back of the tank and climbs onto the top fence. He grips the up, upright exhaust and hoists himself up. When he goes gets onto the tank, he sees plants growing from the ventilation slits. Only now does he stop and think how this tank got here and how plants are growing out of the ventilation slits, which have no soil to grow on. He decides to keep going and crawls on all fours over to the back entrance hatch. With a couple of pulls, the old hatch creaks open. The smell of oil washes over James' face as he glimpses inside the war machine. Without hesitation, he goes in. After a couple of seconds being in the tank, James starts to find, just starts to hear faint noises. They start off quiet and unidentifiable, but soon they get louder and James can distinguish what they are. He hears men shouting a large bang from the tank's gun firing. Then a large metallic bang hit, fills the air, but this is from a shell from one of the attack racks hitting the floor. James looks over to the rack and sees the barrier holding the shells has come off. He walks over to the shell and bends down to examine it. Within, within seconds of looking at it, small flowers grow from the shell. James stand back, stands back in shock. He looks around in horror as plants and vines spurt out of the metal tank. Without hesitation, James clambers out of the hatch. He came in through. He stumbles out of the tank and doesn't turn back. He leaves the metal beast to be consumed by the forest. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. That was fantastic. Our next category is Poetry 20 Plus. Uh, I'd like to invite our two highly commended writers to stand up. They are Guy Russell with The Other One and Suki Shin with COVID Spring. Um, our winner, who I'm afraid isn't with us today, is Sarah Davis with The Green and Yvonne Elliott from our steering group has come to read her poem. The green. One day, soon, all spaces between buildings will show colour, unnamed, or there is no word because there is no space. The shade is on no plan, no map for the future. This is not the ballad, the shade of the tree's soul. In the archive, a scholar, or a witch, may fall upon it the whisper of a colour, try to see what is not there. Mother and father, sun and sky, even through haze, allow us to see, to sense, 
the blue, the yellow. A thought called green, raw and indivisible from the speech of life and from itself, as in Gaelic, the green not pure, but alchemy, compounding true deep where no one goes, foam of fern and lush in mouth, colour that eats light and exalts itself, infinite yet delicate and various. Ink in grain of winter stems, crazed bright of meadow grass, glare of rape fields, suburbs phosphorescent, woodland calm dark. Walk out now before it's late, the ley lines built lung like from midsummer to midsummer. The glow we see in dreams. I close. Thank you, Yvonne. And we come to our final category, which is our poetry in 14 to 19. We have two highly commended poets, Mary Rossiter with The Aftermath, and To All You Ash Grey Men by Neve Whelan. Please stand up. Congratulations. And our winner is Lucy Arthurs with My Roots. Please come up. Where lay our roots? In Milton's green line meadow, here they watch and retain. They thrive in warm condition of nods and greeting smile. They grow amongst thorny brambles and pave concrete tile. And they frame the memory of the lakes in paint, flash and mind, and grow in love along the aisle, help of love and life intertwined. Here our beauty sits mirrored, impatient bulb and sprouted face, Planted in the shopkeeper's endurance, in the bold presence of home and place. Here the lakes are held in woven hands of rooted home, a cradled story of wildlife and their freedom in land to roam. So where lay our roots? In Milton's green planted meadow, whose flower grows testament to the warmth of the homely fellow. Thank you, Thank you Lucy, that was wonderful. Well, I'm, again, thank you so much for um, standing up and reading out your pieces to the winners, which were fabulous and absolutely wonderful to hear read out loud. Congratulations again to our highly commended pieces. And also, huge thanks to everyone who was shortlisted. It was a really, really tough decision to make. And um, we really appreciate everything that people wrote and all the pieces that came into us. Thank you very, very much. We are going to, I'd love to have um, all our winners and the highly commended people who are here to take a photograph. John, may I ask what the time is? In which case we have time to bring you all up on stage, which will be absolutely wonderful. So if I could invite all the winners and highly commended to come up on the stage um, and have a photograph, that would be fantastic. Thank you. As I said, we all have all your copies of the book ready 
to give out to you at the end, at the back of the hall, uh, just outside the hall in a moment. Um, I think this has been um, a short ceremony, but it's been absolutely delightful to spend a little bit of time with you all. We will be running our writing competitions again. We found it really rewarding, enjoyable. This is Mink number three, so there will be four and onwards coming out. We'll be choosing a different theme, and we hope that we can encourage you all to continue to write with us. Um, on behalf of Milton Keynes Literature Festival, Lit Literary Festival, um, again, I'd love to have a huge a thank you to all of you for joining us, to everyone who's joined us over this um, lovely day of events and sessions. We have one more to go this evening, which is sold out. And I would just like to invite John Best up on stage, who is our, our chair of our steering group, to say a final thank you to you all, and then we'll have a huge round of applause. Didn't want to let this moment go past without thanking Flora, who isn't just a member of the team. She's the project manager who's been working on this for months and months. And she is the reason that it's been very successful. But you're the other reason, the fact that we've had contributors to Mink and we've had very good audiences. And this is wonderful. This is not the final event of Litfest Springs Back. There is one more at Waterstones, which is sold out. But this is the final event here at the Central Library. And we think the library location works really well. And I did mention right at the beginning of the day, for some of you who might have been here, that we also appreciate the artwork and the dressing of the room by Westbury Art Centre and Art Central. It is certainly worth um, having a look, um, but you're not allowed to spend more than about three minutes in here because we need all of you out and all of us out no later than five o'clock and we've got a bit of clearing up to do. So thank you so much and congratulations to all the... The, the participants, as well as the winners and the highly commended. And we do look forward to your contributions, every one of you, to Mink Number 4. So keep your eyes peeled to know what the theme for Mink Number 4 will be when we do it. Uh, watch this space. The final thank yous that I've got to say to John, to the steering group, to the Open University who supported us with the competition, the library, Waterstones and Milton St. Keynes City Council. Thank you all so much. <laughs>